happened in a split second. Ray Tensing tried to open the door of Sam DeBose's car. DeBose pulled it shut. Tensing reached in to try to turn the engine off. So when did the car move? Two UC police officers testified it was before the shot. You heard a tougher tire squealing. That's correct. correct. That's correct. And that was followed by the gunshot. Yes. I heard squealing tires. I saw the vehicle start to move away from the curb. Uh, gunshot. Alicia Napier, the only civilian eyewitness, disagreed. Had the DuBose car moved at all prior to the first shot? No. Are it you moved, certain it, it? Yes. It moved after he. It moved after he shot. The prosecution's forensic video analyst said this. Up to one second before uh, the shots fired, uh, there is no forward momentum. But Grant Fredericks admitted there was minor movement after that. So this is a, just a few feet. Defense video expert Scott Roeder gave a different number. How far that vehicle was moved prior to the gunshot being fired? Uh, I believe uh, we determined it was between five and seven feet. So did Tensing's attorney, Stu Matthews, in closing arguments. I would suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that at the time the shot was fired, the car had moved maybe as much as 10 feet, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But assistant prosecutor Stacy DeGraffenry dismissed the distance and the dragging theory. There's nothing to show you that he was in any fear of imminent danger or harm at 1.059 seconds prior to when he shot his gun and fired it into Mr. DeBose's head. Now you can see the dilemma jurors have. They have one story here, another story here. Perhaps what they have to decide is where the truth is, and maybe that's right in the middle, maybe not. Tom McKee, 9 on your side, live at the Hamilton County Courthouse downtown.